This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture here from Think Tech Hawaii. And our show um, is pretty much about that. And <laughs> we're broadcasting from uh, our tropical exotic paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii, where everyone wants to be, especially at this time of the year in January. And that's why sort of increasingly uh, people can't be here anymore because it gets too expensive. So we want to shed a light on how a dwelling has been and could be here on our island. And we felt a little guilty after our last show on R.S. DeSoto Brown and Martin Despain. And last time we were talking about the Kalaha Hilton condos, and uh, which should be a keeper because they're threatened, mm -hmm. because they're on leasehold by Kamehameha right. Schools. Right. We felt a little guilty because, you know, we... The, the rich people are not so endangered here on the island, but more the one on the lower food chain. So right. we thought we'd do justice and make up for that. And Correct. we ran across, literally ran or rolled across a project, another project that another school is involved, yes. is threatening, and which one is that? Well, that's Iolani School, and the area that we're going to be talking about is uh, the Date Laau Street area, uh, consists of some low-rise developments. They are probably being threatened. Uh, they're, it's, it's indefinite, but it's likely that those are all going to be demolished for further redevelopment by Iolani School for whatever reason, probably for them to earn more income. Mm. So we wanted to examine this area and show people what's there. And you were suggesting it was a proletarian paradise, and I suggested it maybe was a little more bourgeois than that because of some of the amenities, and which we, we have, will get to. We will have more arguing going on. Oh, yes, we will. Yes, so we let's will. go yes, on a little will. tour of this photo. Yes, let's. So let's get started, actually, where how you can drive into this little enclave. It's when you come from... A Dade Street, as you said, from the Kapolyani Boulevard side, and then you take a right turn, right. and this is picture one. And this is a building I've been driving by for many years now on my way uh, to work and back home. And whereas the audience might say, okay, what's so nice about yeah. it? And I'm, I'm sorry because it's so sort of deteriorated by now by purpose that it doesn't really come across. But when there was light on and it was, you know, in better shape, it's sort of the quintessence for... Uh, how dwelling might want to be here in Hawaii, it's the lanai. This the lanai is spacious, it's large enough, it's easy breezy, there's micro perforated metal, and there's floor to ceiling glass sliding doors. So this and is, jealousies. And yeah, and for the longest time I've been thinking, wow, I might want to move in there. And this particular elevation is facing north, so you never get overheating. And I was always curious why, you know, with this sort of um, stressed market housing, rental market, why is this empty? And we unfortunately found out recently that, you know, this is all going to be redeveloped and reconstructed. So if we continue now to drive down this sort of uh, one-way street, uh, U-shaped street, that's the next picture. We're going to look down that road that, as you can see in the distance, is, is facing Diamond Head. Yes. And everything that's uh, on the left side is we want to talk about later because that's our pitch to keep that. But yeah. everything on the right side um, is threatened to go soon. And in fact, the next picture, please, is what I took through a construction fence at the end of last year. And both are now gone. And the next picture is that one is the corner when you cut back to Dade Street um, is also gone. And that I found is the same thing. It's a very simple rationalist tropical modernism, a nice composition, nice proportions, biochromatic. You got this overhang. This is facing south. So there was probably enough to shade it. There's this little, you know, fruit-bearing tree there. The only thing that's still there is this sort of very, um, sort of three-dimensionally composed CMU wall. But I'm afraid that might might go as well. Oh, it will eventually, yes. So um, next picture is how the whole thing looks now. I took that through the construction fence just a couple of days ago. So it's all bulldozed and uh, waiting for being redeveloped. And we. Uh, sort of accuse ourselves to, we have not done research on what's going to replace it. No. We leave this up to the developers. and uh, But we want to make a pitch for what's still there and, and, and show you why we like that. So for that, we basically go across the street from here, next picture, and go um, and go to the to the other projects. And this is where the little argument starts Correct. with us and the little competition because we were not 
uh, able to decide on which of these buildings we is, like is the best one. Right. So you first, and you okay. please make your case for your favorite. The okay. Soda. Well, there are there's more than one little complex on this on this piece of property of That's the right. La Laau Street, mm -hmm. but. The two that we're focusing on, this is the first one, the uh, La'au Gardens, and it's got, as we like to say, a crazy canopy there for protection for cars, and it's a freestanding structure. It's not taking up space underneath or any other place like that, but we're going to be looking now at the buildings that you can see a little bit of on the right. Yeah, and, and it, it's not, next picture, it's not that I don't like your project at all. It's, it's a very fine sort of race yeah, between yeah, yeah. the two, and this is yeah. my contribution. I happen to be there when the beautiful rainbow was there. So there's this beautiful, lush, sort of vegetated fence, and, and behind that you see this sort of idyllic uh, enclave. Right, and that, this is, uh, this, this uh, the La'au Gardens is the project uh, that was designed by uh, an architect named Edwin Miyamasu. And uh, we have to thank Don Hibbert, our friend, Absolutely. for giving us this information. He researched this area for us, let us know when things were built. Most of uh, the buildings that we're gonna be talking about the Laau Gardens is from 1961, and the other one, the Lani Hale, is from 1959. So mm -hmm. if we go to the next picture, one of the things that's nice about Laau Gardens is that it has nice ground. It's got vegetation, it has green grass, it's got a fairly nice level of um, uh, maintenance that keeps it in good shape. And it's very jungly. It's jungly. And in the next picture, I'm sympathetic with your project too. This is my favorite detail here. Uh, that uh, that wall that's enclosing the lanai has a sort of a wallpaper, a lattice screen. Yeah. So right. the door is basically sort of an integral part of that cladding. Yeah. So it's basically hidden, and right. that makes the lanai look way more spacious. And you actually have that in high-end architecture. Yeah. Mostly museums, Ayn Pei has done that. I mean, many architects throughout history have yeah. sort of been hiding utilitarian of elements. Of course, of course. So this is a classical element but it's not a bohemian, basically, or very upscale. So this is rather simple to do. You know, it doesn't take a lot of effort, but it's very thoughtful and just speaks for the integrity of, of design in, in these days. That is exactly the case. And so if we go to the next picture, I think one of the things that's really nice about what you just said was l amenities can be designed into the project that don't have to cost a lot of money, but that add to the experience of living there. Mm -hmm. And one of the features of La Au Gardens are these tiles, these exterior tiles. They were commissioned for the building. They were specially made for the building. And as you pointed out, they encompass different types of themes. At the ground level, these are sort of flora. They're sort of plant-related. Mm -hmm. You go up to the next levels, the next two and three floors, they are human-related and uh, animal-related. That's next picture. We can take a glimpse. Right, and um, I like also in the left that you can see that the address is also a specially, mm -hmm. uniquely made uh, tile situation. Absolutely. But we've got fish and we've got human yeah. figures and. And they're um, very typical in the mid-century, mm -hmm. really typical. Yeah. No, what's typical about it, as you point out always, it's this is not literal, uh, but this is also not purely abstract. It's somewhere in the middle. Yes. I and mean, you can almost think these are rebars. Maybe actually they are. They could be. They look <laughs> like they are. They've been rebars. Yeah, they look like and they are. And they're so fun, and they're sort of this, this sort of uh, playful yep. interpretation of yep. local things. Yes. There's a little sort of reference to some Hawaiian yes. stuff. Yes. But it's not pretending that it knows, because right. mostly these are, again, sort of exotic architects. Yes. These are not native Hawaiians, no. most likely. And they're they not came. trying to make it, no. as you said. This is mm -hmm. not trying to look like a grass house. Yeah. It is using, however, themes that are from the place where it exists. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a really positive thing. Mm -hmm. And in the next picture, something else that's a nice detail of La'au Gardens are the breeze blocks. And these are kind of diamond-shaped, which is also a very popular motif at that time. Um, the fact that they are painted a different color accentuates them. Again, this is not a hugely expensive touch, but it is a nice touch, and it adds a little elegance, I yeah. think, to no, the overall absolutely. appearance. Absolutely, and at mid-century, you got to have had the breeze You box. had to, you had and to. And you see the birds still love it to this day as <laughs> the picture you do. took, right? <laughs> well, in our next picture, we, we step up from what we were talking about to why maybe it's not totally proletariat, because both this building and the other one that Martin's going to talk about have swimming pools. This is not an amenity that most small apartment complexes have had or would have today. Mm -hmm. So this takes this Laau area a little bit above just the basic, basic level yeah, yeah. of 
housing. And that's why the audience, after that argument and discussion between the two of us, we added that little question mark in brackets right. to the title of the Correct. show. Is it truly proletarian or is it a little more yeah, bourgeois? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the next picture is sort of you coming full circle. When you come around your favorite complex, uh, once again from uh, at the corner at the intersection as it shows of Loud and Dade Street, um, you see how it, it's, it's got the classic, you know, golden section proportions yes. almost. It's very delicately, you know, composed between solid yes. uh, faces and, and open ones. And once again, biochromatically, except that right part where it's flush, uh, the other parts are perfect. These architects had to get by without air conditioning. Yes. So the opaque parts block out the sun and the lanai is pushed back so deep that it blocks the glass. That's so right. So this is probably elite whatever silver, gold, or so building. Well, except we didn't have those then. We didn't, didn't have that designation then. But today to. we would. We, we wouldn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. And today is a lot of bullshitting and greenwashing. Well, about yeah, it. that's true. That's they true. Were really and you got another, uh, so now we actually cut uh, the corner and go on uh, Dade Street, and you got some nice uh, detailing. Yeah, story, in the next so. picture. What do we got? We're there, okay, so as you pointed out too, there's this little level of canted uh, frontage, that, that, that front wall there mm -hmm. has got a little, little angle to it. So it isn't just straight. Yeah. And again, this shows that somebody was paying attention, somebody was trying to make aesthetic decisions, and that when this was constructed, the level of construction expertise was not just super, super basic. No. And, so and, there, and, is, there and, are admirable qualities absolutely. to small buildings and, like this that may not immediately be apparent. No. I but try this today. It's tough because you got to tilt the formwork yeah. and you got to get the concrete in from the top. Yeah. So you have it narrow where the concrete gets in and right. then it gets bitter. I mean, this really took some uh, and skills. That, and, that, and that front canted, tilted front mm -hmm. facade mm -hmm. has got to be the same angle the whole way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that level of, mm -hmm. again, that's construction expertise. That's mm -hmm. not just slapdash. Mm -hmm. And, and next we, picture oh, is, yeah. the, is the same thing, stepping back and looking at it from the distance. Right. And we both have talked about these, uh, the slatted, the vertical slats, the vertical fins that you see adorning the facade of the building, which is where the uh, title of the building is, La Isle Gardens. And also at the very bottom level, at street level, there are, the apartments have small enclosures that can serve as a semi-private garden and or relaxation space. Mm -hmm. Again, an amenity that you wouldn't normally see with this type of low-end exactly. building. And when we were there separate from each other uh, last Saturday, I ran into a resident and I approached him and I said, are you going to be kicked out and yeah. is this going to be torn down? And he very, with a very sad voice said, yeah, most likely yes. And I said, well, how come? And he said, pretty much it's leasehold and Ilani school and they probably going to determine our lease um, and, um, and and he said he has been there 20 years and I found him uh, he, probably his front yard the second from the left he was planting these tiny little bonsai mm -hmm. plants so there's this care yeah. from the occupants yes. and which you usually don't find in in low in lower income housing it's basically gets trashed people yeah. don't feel associated yes. with this yes but here there's this participation yeah. there is this sort of care and it just speaks for, I think, the architectural integrity that, you know, with these very, very sort of simple means, uh, sort of low input sort of from a budget, there's a very high output in, yeah. in acceptance and, and, and relevance. And also those small front private enclosures give you a sense of ownership that you want to take care of mm -hmm. your own place mm -hmm. rather than it being common. But I think also the level of maintenance on the building in general is indicative that people want to keep it up. Yeah. If it isn't trashed, you'll help to keep no, it up. Absolutely. And we're going to zoom into your, which you already explained, the lattice detail in the next picture. Uh, once again, we did a whole show about sun slated, you know, Hawaii, and here the single letter with a special typeface, you know, designed, sort of custom made for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And next picture, some more lettuce here. Yeah. Brian? Yeah, and I like the fact, so, so in the picture on the top, you can see the wooden upright lattice, the, the, the upright forms mm -hmm. have integrated between them this little extra piece. Yeah. Very simple, but it adds, 
artistic and aesthetic interest mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to something that otherwise may not have it. And then if you look on the right, there are the concrete breeze, breeze blocks. Mm -hmm. So we've got the contrast as and the, let's say, the compatibility of those two different forms mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right next to each other. Mm -hmm. Very typical of the time period of 1961. And to me, the fact that they are old fashioned now gives them a charm too, yeah. because this isn't replicated anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And this concludes your pitch to Soto. This Sorry, is, time is over. That's that's my and, La Al Garden. Exactly. Uh, that's and my La Al Garden's piece. So now comes the better one, which oh, is mine. Oh, I don't know if I agree but, about that. But we have to say, I mean, this in, in all respect, I have a lot of respect. This is sort of in the best tradition of Kenneth Frampton, sort of critical regionalism. This is an interpretation mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. more sort of local references yep. and yes. the textures. Yes. Whereas mine, and that's probably why where I come from, exactly. mine is a very almost nationalist approach. Right. Or of, international. Of, of high uh, uh, inter European modernism. Right. Basically coming to the island, and that's the next picture. And this is uh, Lonnie Holly, as you already uh, said it. Right, and who uh, Ernie Hara? You said was the he was is the, the yeah. architect, and that's probably what you find out later. Another reason why this is my favorite here, and again, it's within that U composition of the street. The complex itself is a U that opens up to Date Street, and basically is comprised of this central courtyard, which we see in the next picture. And I, I can only imagine, I mean, talking aging and, you know, getting patina, to say the least, yeah. uh, is true to the architecture and to the ve vehicles there. Yes. And, uh, but uh, you can imagine how this looked like oh, yeah. back in the days in the late 50s yes. with the caddies with the fins. Yes. And not here the late 80s or early 90s right. when, whenever they did the Example sedan that you or see the there. Right. But, but you can see, if you just imagine that, and the next picture is within our discussion, you made the fair point to basically say, well, you know what ruins is that everyone has to look at the cars, and I can't argue that. Yeah. That is certainly true. But then we're so weird that we came up in our first show in this year mm -hmm. here, which the reference is at the very bottom, to say, what if there would be no cars on the island? Correct. And that's my pitch next picture, if you would sort of redevelop that and find somehow a way to do car share, whatever things you can do these days. And you basically give back the courtyard to nature. Right and largely vegetate that that would help the bioclimatic uh, sort so. of um, heat island effect um, yeah. preventing effect and the pool would become this evaporative cooling uh, center of the courtyard and that would be beautiful uh, certainly yeah and the other problem also is that uh, the pool to get to the pool you have to traverse the, yeah. pl the place where vehicles are driving, and that's, that's always not uh, no, safe. No. So that un that's an unfortunate aspect yeah. of this. But again, the pool elevates it a little bit above just the lowest end yeah. of housing. Yeah, yeah. Next picture is looking at it from the outer side, which is the circulation, the access side, and this is uh, towards Lao Street. So this, the long one is the west elevation, and the other short one is the south elevation from the bottom picture. And once again, the picture I took at the top left was somehow midday, probably earlier, mm -hmm. not late afternoon, where you can still see the pretty significant overhangs, their circulation. So they're multi-purpose. That's how you access your unit. Yeah. But it also shades you and shelters you from the rain. Yes. So it does everything you need in the tropics. Yes. What you also should need is vegetation. They have it nicely and neatly integrated. And then the CMU is sort of laid in this running bond, sort of a very modern horizontal. Mm -hmm. It underlines the horizontality mm -hmm. of the building. So once again, a very simple, very utilitarian, but very elegantly sort of uh, accentuated yeah. building. Yeah. Down to its detailing, next picture. I got some crazy concrete too yep. to compete with you. And mine is the stair steps. And they're even basically... Uh, integrated into the uh, into the wall, and they're cantilevering from yes. it. And then you can also say they're tapered, just they are like tapered. in yours. Yes, yes. And this is this is this is high standard. This is really cool. Try to do that these days. You're going to basically lose a lot of money or spend a lot of money. And I also like on the left picture that composition. They're strategically positioned at the end of these legs of the U at this blank wall yeah. and adding this other slab and then inserting it into this void is a right. really beautiful right. uh, modern composition. And I just, I think floating stairways like that are kind of a lost art uh, and I admire absolutely. them and they are very, very typical as of, I said earlier, of mid-century sort of uh, mindset. 
I think they're worth doing a separate I show do too. on them. Should I we? do too. Okay, done yeah. deal, done yeah. deal. We got to do. Well, we talked about a stairway show, so we're mm -hmm. going to do a stairway Let's show. Let's do that. Yeah. And the, probably the most iconic feature is next picture because I got some breeze box too. You do. And here they are. And once again, they serve multiple purposes. Here you can see it basically protects and shelters the excess of the units on that side. So you're not out on the spot the whole time. You have some privacy buffer. If I'm a parent, which I am, and my kids are little, it protects them from running into the streets and yeah. being run over. So yeah. once again, the modernists just you know figured it out to do things that were multi-duty and multi-purpose yeah. in a really clever way. Yes. And the next picture is me basically and driving by there on a daily basis. And this is why we're on our permanent background picture. You're sitting in front of the bush and I sit in front of my bicycle. That's and it looks right. like you want to get out of the bush and steal my I bicycle. I want to steal your bike. No, you can have it. I got a car. So there's this. And also, we got to do a show about uh, breeze blocks. Yes, and we, we do. probably have uh, my friend and colleague Lance Walters join in because he's doing some research on the sort of uh, evolution of that historic element. And as you already revealed, probably another reason why this is my favorite building is because I'm close to the architect, because next picture, he's also the architect of the building I have the privilege to be in, which is Waikiki Grand that we yes. ran a show about. And is Waikiki Grand still hot and cool? Yes, it is, because as we show in the show, it's been featured in the Monocle Travel Guide series, uh, where all these other fancy metropolises mm -hmm. are featured in. Mm -hmm. So there must be something cool about us Absolutely. as Honolulu, and there must be something cool about the buildings by Ernie And it must be Hera. cool that you live in one of those buildings, Absolutely. which makes you more special. And, and hopefully I can stay there, because again, the pressure on the market is affecting all of us, yeah. all, all yeah. us little people. Right. Yeah, yeah. So next picture, the coolest of the building is when I come home late from work, yep. because all of a sudden my favorite building lights up and it's yeah. a lantern, yeah. right? Yeah. And just out of the simple utilitarian reason, this isn't LED or stuff people would mm -hmm. use these days. There's a simple a safety fluorescent light tube behind, but due to the nature of the CMO, you block it basically makes them glow. And exactly. How cool is that? And, and this is what we talked about earlier. When you have a facade like that, that you can see light through, and daylight, it looks entirely different mm -hmm. from the outside mm -hmm. than it does when it is lit from within at mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. So day and night, you get two totally different appearances for the same building. Yeah. And that adds to the dynamics of living there and being around exactly. it in a positive way. Yeah. And here we have that competition on whereas yours is, because yours is more, again, Frampton-like, critical regionalism, the uh, the diamond-shaped CMU. Oh, yeah. This is the simple yep. geometric one, right. the more generic one, right. the more international style one. Absolutely. But yet the way its bond is, it's rather genius. It also yep. loses, uses the, almost the least amount of material you can use because yeah. of this sort of staggering. Yes. And you create yes. not only the voids that the CMU has itself, but also an additional void between. between. the two. Right. So how brilliant is that? Again, it and, is very and smart. And serves so many reasons. So I was so impressed by that, and it ingrained in my mind <laughs> on a daily basis driving by it, so that it inspired me for a project we did so many years ago, which is the next picture, uh, which we called the tropical textile, which was uh, proposed for Manoa. And as you can tell, it's very much inspired uh, here also by the bioclimatic aspects of it, uh, because they're strategically dimensioned three feet high, uh, deep, and, um, and, and so in, on all three dimensions, three feet. So then they shade the yeah. building all the time. We ran right. a show about that in the good old uh, urban transcendence days. Les Campers uh, was my guest, who is the concrete creator uh, by Great Pacific Rocky Mountain Precast. So if you guys are interested in that project, look it up. And you can say, well, Martin, you're getting sentimental. You like the good old stuff. Yeah. And that's why I design yeah. stuff that looks old. So yeah. Martin, wake up, be modern, right? Maybe, be yeah. cool. Yeah. But this is the 21st century. There you go. Exactly. Built more glass towers. Right? There you These go. And cool. AC. Exactly. So no, we don't do that. And do people think that's still cool? Next picture. Yes. This is the Mark magazine. This is a contemporary uh, Dutch magazine mm. that features the coolest stuff in the world of these days. And yes, mm -hmm. they selected us and featured us. So there must be something cool about Ernie Harris' work. There you That's go. That's so timeless. There Let's call go. it timeless. Uh, right? And I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I agree that it is timeless, but I also like the fact that the buildings we just looked at 
are of their time too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they are identifiable as mid-century yeah, buildings no. in addition yeah. to the very livable qualities they have. Mm -hmm. The exterior does indicate the time they come from yeah. and I like that. That's absolutely true. Next is the second to last picture that um, share that uh, uh, has another f shows another fear that you have. Yeah. And my fear, and unfortunately I think it's going to come true, is that the high-rise buildings that you see in the distance, which started being constructed in the 1970s, are probably going to continue their march into the Date Laau little enclave that we've just talked about mm -hmm. and praised. And eventually all the buildings we've just been talking about will be demolished and mm -hmm. replaced by high-rises. And that could very well be the case. But, as Martin can point out, the, we don't necessarily have to go with a high rise that has all the bad qualities because in no, the and, and we also want to make clear that always in our shows we're yes we love the good old stuff yeah. because it's so cool, but we also understand that there's pressure of development yeah. explosion of population on this island. So who are we to say exactly. you know you keep all the little stuff? Yeah, you right. should keep as much as you can, but when you can't because of that reason, you should develop. But then you should develop in the spirit right. of the means and methods of the architecture from mid-century, which was easy breezy, yes. pre-fossil, yes. and all the goodies, exotic, yeah. and not the invasive way we see, unfortunately, left yeah. and right in all the high-rise development in Kaka'ako and Co. Right. So yes, as you were about to indicate, if you should develop here in a higher way than next picture, something that you have already seen in a couple of other shows. This is a development called Primitiva. This is number one. We're currently starting to work on number two. And this is how you can, you, how our dear friend Kurt Sandberg calls stack the nice. yes. You basically apply that what you've seen from the previous right, pictures right. To, a, to a taller building. Correct. But again, that only because um, if you shouldn't keep that there, but our main pitch in Plato is keep these gems, yes. both are favorites. Yes. Because yes. They, really, they really deserve to be there. Uh, they're as fresh as they were way back. Yes. So from our point of view, rather than sort of uh, being greedy, yeah. Right? As yeah. a motivation. But otherwise, we don't see any need to build anything. Well, and there. also, too, that uh, first of all, the livability of the stack line eyes, as you just said, is positive. The lesser usage of energy is positive. But also, the appreciation for the buildings that we just talked about, their architectural features and their livability, they shouldn't just be discarded because they're 55 years old. They should be appreciated, and particularly for their aesthetics that we wouldn't replicate today to keep them rather right. than bulldoze them. Sounds good. Let's continue to talk about that in our next show that we just yes. saw. We're going to call it Tropical Tectonics. Okay. Yes, that's right. That's and right. That's un right. Until that, you guys, please stay very proletarian exotic. <laughs> See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.